This month, American diplomats pressed Pakistan to go after the support network that allowed Osama bin Laden to hide in plain sight. Instead, Pakistani authorities arrested five people who allegedly helped the U.S. locate the terror leader. Charlie Daggett has more on the developing rift between the two countries. A group of Pakistanis reportedly spied on Osama bin Laden's compound from a safe house and fed vital information back to the CIA. Pakistan's top spy agency arrested five alleged informants who helped lead U.S. special forces to the hideout. Navy SEALs killed bin Laden in a raid last month that stunned and embarrassed the Pakistani government. Pakistan denies a report in the New York Times that the arrests include an army major who U.S. officials say copied the license plate of cars visiting bin Laden's compound. News of the roundup comes during tense times between the CIA and the ISI, Pakistan's intelligence agency. At a Senate briefing last week, the CIA's deputy director rated Pakistan's cooperation with the U.S. on counterterrorism at just three out of ten. The Pakistani government remains angry the U.S. killed bin Laden without letting them know about the operation. Pakistani officials tell CBS News the informants were arrested because they acted without the government's permission. Some American authorities are now asking why Pakistan chose to go after the men who helped track bin Laden down rather than those who helped him hide. Charlie Daggett, CBS News. The United States is also accusing Pakistan of delaying entry to CIA officers who are supposed to take part in a joint anti-terror operation. For more, we are joined by CBS News Foreign Affairs analyst Pamela Falk. Thank you for being here with us, Pamela. Absolutely. Ben. So is there any way to save the relationship between the U.S. and Pakistan? Yes, absolutely. And a lot of negotiation has to be done. It, it is at its all-time low. And that is because uh, last week uh, CIA Director Leon Panetta met with his counterpart and was warned very sternly. And obviously with the arrest of these five informants, it's sort of outrageous in a way because these were helpers to the U.S. CIA find Osama bin Laden, which the Pakistanis, as you mentioned, did not do. So uh, with a two million, uh, billion dollar a year relationship, an aid package, uh, it's pretty important that the United States find a way to use that leverage to get some issues, at least not arresting these informants and interrogating them, uh, from the relationship. And that's really, now, some people say uh, that because of nuclear weapons and because of the fact that Pakistan does have terrorists, the United States is boxed, but it shouldn't be that way. There's a lot of pushback from Congress right now. Well, speaking of pushback, some uh, members of Congress want to cut aid to Pakistan. So could that happen, and what would happen should that happen? Well, cutting all the aid is probably both unlikely and uh, ill-advised because of all of the other issues between the United States and Pakistan, but holding some back as leverage on these kind of things. These were not, as very widely reported, spies. They were informants of the CIA helping the U.S. government find Osama bin Laden. They weren't spying on the Pakistani government. And so it's important that the U.S. make clear and also protect these individuals. Let's shift to Libya now because 10 members of Congress are actually suing the president, saying that he went right. around Congress to um, install force, military force against Libya, uh, and they want a judge to suspend that military operation. Is that going to happen? Could that happen? Well, it is going to move forward, but what's happened with these lawsuits in the past is that the the judiciary says this is a political question. And you have to step back a second and look at the fact that there are no declared wars uh, in the United States since World War II. That means that the reason that the War Powers Act was passed in the Nixon administration over his veto in 1973 was in order to try to bring back the balance between Congress and the president in hostilities and war uh, powers. And that is uh, precisely what the War Powers Act is trying to do. Re you also have to remember it's only 10 members of Congress. Mm -hmm. but. What's really interesting is they're reading the polls, and uh, some of the polls have said, uh, Rasmussen last week, that one out of four Americans, um, only one out of four Americans, are in favor of the Libya action, and you're starting to see basically a lot of anti-war sentiment in the Congress, and that involves Afghanistan, Libya, 
and and I think this case uh, may may be decided the same way previous cases have and been. And speaking of this case with Libya, why are we seeing Congress and the president act on this now? Well, they're acting on it now because the 60 days passed in which the president has to report or get congressional support under the act, uh, but it adds 30 days, and that ends Friday. So there is a mm. real deadline, time, crush, yeah. time pressure. For, right. for, for him to respond. And he has given a report, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, well, CBS News Foreign Affairs Analyst Pamela Falk, thanks so much for being with us. Absolutely, Thank Betty. You. Good to be here. Sure.